Hey, everybody. I am thrilled to welcome Matt Heafy to the program. We haven't had an actual artist on the show for ages and ages. I mean, occasionally we get uh, people whose who schedules, uh, like they'll, they'll do iPhone videos for us or something like that. Uh, but we rarely get to talk to people in real time. So thank you so much for doing yeah. this. Yeah. Oh, of course. Thank you guys so much. And luckily, I just happen to have a streaming rig that, that works out perfect. With this Isn't kind of thing. that funny? You, you are yeah. no small thing on, on Twitch. You have 30,000 people following you on Twitch. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying. Yeah, the subscriber count's pretty crazy, too. I think we just hit like 1,100 subscribers, which is really good for like that small amount of followers. Um, and it's growing pretty crazy we were the first band that had ever streamed our live show from the gun run irl backpack and i think i'm the first dude who had a guitar clinic and the first guy in a band who does his daily practices by request with his subscribers and all that <laughs> so we just up oh, stuff we just keep trying to break all the uh break all the little molds and, and have a good time with it. Well, that I mean, that's kind of one of my first questions is you you are offering people incredible access that normally fans don't get to, you know, hi, I'm the lead singer and rhythm guitarist in a, in a major <laughs> band, and uh, you want to just come and hang out and watch, watch me play Overwatch or watch me practice or what do you want to hear me practice? I mean, is there a downside to that? Do you get any, any uh, unusual fans or, or people that sort of I abuse mean... that privilege? Well, luckily, what I love so much about Twitch is that you could set the extensive rules for how you want your community to be and how you want your channel to be. So my rule section is maybe a little annoyingly long. But the reason for that is I've been doing the public spotlight, public eye thing since I was like 12, 13 years old. So I'm really used to navigating around those things. And the fact that we can set rules, we have really great rules. It's just basically no discussions of anything that divides us, but everything only that unifies us. And that's what my channel is all about. We have amazing moderators, amazing subscribers and followers, and 99.9% .9 of the time it's positive, that's which is amazing. That's that is wonderful. It's great. Yes. To be, I mean, some of that is sculpting the community so that they understand and respect your rules. But that's good to hear because you know, every once in a while you get a, a wild card oh, yeah. that comes in and yeah, and like, and definitely like you know, you hear things about the dark world of the gaming world, but there's also the music world, but there's also the news world. There's also everything. There is right. crummy stuff and everything that's good, and that's why it's all about cultivating the community that you want to be there. And my moderators are amazing in Discord and Twitch, and it's just something that we keep going. And the ideas came about it because um, I've recently befriended a couple of the, the guys at Twitch, Meme Dude and Volition. They're also, those are their screen names on Twitch. Sure. I was telling them about my normal day, and I was like, yeah, I wake up, I buy schedule, I warm up for an hour straight to make sure three to five hours later I can sing, then I sing for two hours, then I can finally game. So I was like, man, I wish I could stream more on gaming. They're like, why don't you stream that? <laughs> That's a really good idea. So we've only oh, been yeah. doing this for like two, maybe a week and a half or two weeks. And since then, we went from like 200 subscribers to 1,100 subscribers in like two weeks. So that's pretty good. So I like to see where it keeps going. Are you going to be able to keep that up with going out on tour and having to do shoots and stuff like that? I mean, how, how often do you think that that's going to be interrupted? Well, uh, Twitch HQ entrusted me with one of the Gunrun IRL backpacks. So we're streaming the shows, streaming the warm-ups, and... We're going to try to build one that's going to work in Germany and the UK. Okay. So I'll have all my, my daily warm-ups, which is pretty extensive. And the people that tune in, it's 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it's pretty annoying like to watch my vocal warm-ups. It's all these loud sounds and stuff, but people hang out for it. And it's 30 minutes of head voice exercises, all these opera-style exercises sure. while I'm warming up guitar. And then 20 minutes of trivium and head voice. So it sounds like me singing like high pitch trivium and it doesn't make sense. Then the last 10 minutes it's the full voice and then at 3.30 it's the full practice. Right. So I've also been streaming Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I've been a practitioner of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for a while so I stream those. Just trying to give everyone like a little bit more insight because I feel like people know me pretty decently from my normal social media stuff and from trivium but this is nice to have another side to, to really be able to just be myself while doing the thing that I do for trivium. No, that's that's wonderful and, and what a gift, right? <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> So let's talk guitar. Uh, I know that you started out on guitar at a young age, but you started out on tenor saxophone at an even younger age. Did you choose yeah. tenor sax, or was that one of those things where the family said, you need to play an instrument, and you're going <laughs> to do that? There were always guitars in the house, and there's a picture of me like six months holding a guitar. I'm not really playing it because I'm six of months course. old. Um, my dad always played casually his whole life, and I think around 11 I picked it up, but I was terrible. And... I'm not sure if that would have been the same time as middle school. I could have gotten into saxophone at the same time as guitar. And the reason why I picked tenor sax, they didn't have violin, they didn't have guitar. And I was like, I guess this is the next coolest thing. But I was never necessarily a fan of jazz. I'm a fan of jazz now. I was in jazz band. 
And it's all there was. I wish there was guitar. I wish there was violin. I wish there was piano. There just wasn't. Um, so I was in marching band uh, in high school, the Lake Brantley Patriots. We dressed up in the high socks and the hats. and We'd march at football games. Um, but as soon as Trivium kind of started picking up, I left that. And I joined Trivium when I was 13. Uh, yeah, so I was still in eighth grade when I joined. So it was before high school. That's amazing. What was it that made you say, okay, now I can transition to guitar? Like, What was it that inspired you to pick up a guitar and put down the tenor sax? <laughs> um, well, they're both at the same time. And when I first picked up guitar, I picked it up to, because I thought it was the cool thing to do. And I thought that it would make me look cooler. So I would, I tried it for a pop punk band. My tryout song was Damn It by Blink-182. And I didn't make it into the band. I was super depressed. And I was like, all right, I'm done with guitar. <laughs> and a kid lent me this thing called the Black Album by Metallica. And I listened to it. And I knew right away, I was like, this is the kind of music I'm meant to play and that I should be playing. And so I just spent hours until I was able to replicate those sounds. And I realized that that took time and effort. I played my talent show in eighth grade covering No Leaf Clover. And this high school student came up to me and said, hey, do you want to try it for my band? My band's called Trivium. We need a lead guitar player. Um, I try out songs for Home the Bell Tolls. Nailed it. I remember when I walked in, it was all these high school kids looking at me like, what is this 13-year-old going to do? And they're being kind of kind of scary to me. But um, I nailed it, and the looks all changed, and I've been in the band ever since. That's fantastic. And you've been a, you've been a Gibson player and an Epiphone player for a very long time. Uh, your first guitar was given to you by your dad. It was at the Les Paul Custom. Is that true? Yeah. Yep. It's – where is it? Can you see it on camera right now? I, do, it I is, see some. It's the one behind the – wait. No, we, we get as far as the Warlock. In the, okay. There we go. It's the one right behind the Alpine white one. Okay. And that one is, like I believe it's a 98 Les Paul Custom. Okay. But that's the one that I gave to Epiphone and said, model my signature after this. Make it as close to possible as this guitar and keep it as affordable as possible for any kids. Because one of the drags for me as a kid is I would always want to play my hero's signature guitar. And I'd go to the store. And I'd see. I was like, wow, this is kind of affordable. I'd play it. And I'd look up. Oh, no, this is the... F uh, model of what he plays. He plays the $10,000 model and this is the $500 model. So I didn't want that. And I wanted it to be the, the thing that's good enough for me live in the studio is the thing that kids buy and there's no other model. And that's what we were able to get with Epiphone. I, I feel like the MKH 6 and 7 black and white are the best Epiphones they've ever made because they were willing to do that. And we have a really great relationship and we're able to make something that is whether you're just picking up guitar for the first time or you've been playing your entire life or professionally or hobby, it works for you. So have you ever been, uh, so many people that have signature models have said in the past, like, I want something that if something goes wrong on the road, if, I, if, uh, if our gear gets stolen or something, that I could walk into any store and pick up my model and play that live on stage. Is that pretty much where your signature model is? Like, it's, it's already kitted out with EMGs. It's got mm -hmm. all, all your customizations. I saw it's got a really nice heel on it, too, for a lot mm -hmm. of upper fret access. So this is not just like, eh, just put my name on the truss rod cover. Like, you, you actually oh, no. had yeah, design was, input on this. Yeah, it was very, very close working with them. Like, I sent, that, sent my original Les Paul, and they had that. I was like, check the weight, check everything. I'm like, I know you can't make it exactly this, because it's a... $3,500 guitar versus you're talking like a thousand dollar guitar, but said as close as possible. And we went through a round of prototypes for about a year and we're like, this wasn't it. This isn't right. So we kept hit, hammering it until we had something right. And I do do that quality test. Like every once in a while, I'll give away my entire touring stock to friends or guys in other bands. I remember I gave, um, damn, the list of people that own my guitar is pretty <laughs> crazy because that's, that's another great thing with Epiphone. They give me guitars to be able to give to my, to my heroes. Um, James and Kirk from Metallica, um, Bruce Dickinson and his kids own my guitar, the guys from Avenged, the guys from Korn, the guys from Volbeat, um, Ishan from Emperor has a couple of my guitars. So it's just giving to friends. Petrucci has one of my guitars and he gave me one of his guitars. So cool things like that happen. And, um, but yeah, so I'll give away my touring stock out of the boat itself to friends or guys in other bands sometimes and have Epiphone send me something directly from the factory. And that's kind of like my quality check. And it's always awesome. That's great. And you have a, a, a variation on the model coming out, I think, next month, the Snowfall guitar? Uh, uh, yeah, if the pre-orders are out. Yeah, it's okay. out, and I think that it was more of a limited release, and it's sold out, so they're going to make more. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Which is good, yeah. So it do you, the, the, the beautiful thing about the Snowfall, um, and we've seen like Brendan Small's uh, Snow Horse, you know, with white fretboard and everything on this guitar is white. All, all the surfaces that you would not expect to be finished are finished. Is there any problem with playing a guitar with a fully white fretboard? Do you get, uh, you know, I, I suppose if the frets are tall enough, you wouldn't necessarily grind into the fretboard. But, you know, are there any different things that you have to do when you have a, a monochromatic entire guitar? Uh, I haven't. 
I haven't found any issues yet. If I see them, we'll make sure we get back <laughs> to Epiphone and, and work on that. But yeah, we, we tour so extensively that that's what's really nice to be able to test everything out. But what's funny, when my Snowfall came out, I did not know that there was going to be another two or three signature Epiphones that were all white of different players coming at the same time. <laughs> I saw it. I was like, "What the hell's going on, man?" <laughs> it was, I just okay. figured it was like, "Oh, that's the cool thing that's happening now. They're part of the tree. You're creating a trend." I guess it's so. Wonderful. Yeah, it was me, Brandon, Bjorn, and maybe some Tommy Thayer as well. Yes, I think Tommy there were like has a, a very yes. yeah, a very white and silver. I wonder if they were wondering the same thing. Um, I was like, <laughs> "There's definitely a theme going on here." So <laughs> someday you'll all be at Nam together, and you can actually talk yes. about it. Yes. Um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about uh, about your gaming habits because uh, mm-hmm. you know uh, I've always heard that you know when you're out on tour, gaming on the bus is a big thing. It keeps you occupied on the longer trips and stuff like that. But you game a lot when you're at home, when you're off tour, uh, to relax. And I've noticed that you play uh, uh, PUBG, uh, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. You play uh, some CS:GO lately, uh, mm-hmm. and a fair amount of Overwatch. We are huge Overwatch fans on the Rocksmith staff. Many of us play so, every day at lunch. You're welcome to join us. So yes, I'd love to. Uh, but we got to know who is your main. Vera. <laughs> who, who? Vera. Really? It's all the way. Yeah, I've spent the most hours on Vera. I, I love Vera. I use Vera as a really aggr- – like I know she's a DPS character, but I like to use her extremely aggressively. And – for some reason, it's always clicked with Farah, and I, I love love that character. Then so much. we really want you on our team and not against us, because we get our our butts kicked by aggressive Farahs far more often. Uh, That's than, the best. <laughs> even the guys that are <laughs> running the border going, yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I, I, we we freaking hate Farah. Uh, <laughs> then when it comes to team matches, I'll I, I I'm also gotten pretty good with Zenyatta for some reason, and it was like the polar opposite to Farah. Um, People always want me to be Hanzo and Genji because I'm Japanese. <laughs> I'm okay with Hanzo after the Halloween, uh, the Halloween mode. Mm-hmm. Um, Genji's still really tricky. Genji's still really tricky. Um, I, I wish I was better at PUBG. My hero of PUBG is Shroud, and I, I watched him pretty much every single day on the last tour, like before going on stage and just trying to do what he does. Even this last match that I just played on the end of our stream, I was like, I want to try to play like Shroud. I died. I died. I died. And then the next time I couldn't find anybody and then I died. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I need him to teach me how to get better at this game. That's that's fair. We can I can use that, too. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'm not sure how much time you've spent with Rocksmith, but I know that uh, this actually I don't know if people know this. A fan of Rocksmith, uh, uh, Toy Machine SH, actually was in one of your your gaming chats and brought up Rocksmith and said, oh, you should have your music in Rocksmith. And you responded to him, oh, no, I'm totally down for that. You should have them call me. <laughs> he contacted us. We contacted oh, our oh. licensing team. And then the licensing team contacted you. So first of all, thank you, Twitch, for making this happen. This actually, if you weren't streaming, we wouldn't have had that, that direct That's way so- to, to get in touch with you. Uh, so yay, yay to the brave new world. That's amazing. Amazing. Uh, but uh, with that in mind, I'm not sure if you've spent a lot of time with Rocksmith, but obviously it's it's a way for people to learn how to play guitar at their own pace. Learning it's a real guitar. It's why I love it so much. And yeah. that's why I always, when people ask me about how do I learn guitar, I say, well, learn how to learn first. And then I always say like a game like Rocksmith is going to be so much more helpful than anything else because it's a real guitar you're playing. Right. So I've played other games that don't use a real guitar. And I'm horrible at them. I, I can't do anything because it's so different than what I normally do. It is a completely different skill set. When yes. I had the same thing when 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 we can say it when Guitar Hero came out, uh, people expected, oh, you're going to be great at that. I'm like, uh, that no, I'm not. I'm terrible because I'm used to six strings, not five buttons. And I got to the point where I felt like I needed to represent, so I got to the point where I could play on expert. And then everybody's like, oh, look at the show-off who plays, plays real guitar. And I'm like, no, you don't understand. These are completely different skill sets. The only thing they have in, in common, to a certain extent, is learning how to, to move your right hand in a rhythm. That's mm-hmm. all. I mean, and, and even that, it's different when you're strumming strings or, or individually arpeggiating chords or something like that. You can't do that. because the, the Guitar Hero games are a lot of fun, and, and we still play rock band and Guitar Hero for fun ourselves. But, uh, yeah, it, it, it does make... It does make a difference, and and I'm thrilled because a lot of people have started on those games and then come over and then sort of had to to make that uh, make that connection between oh what's the difference between the plastic games and and the wood games if you will. Uh, with that in mind, 
uh, a lot of people that pick up Rocksmith uh, do so because other methods didn't work or they're combining Rocksmith with other methods to try to mm -hmm. figure out what the right way for them to learn is. Do you have any good general advice for people that are trying to learn how to play guitar, good habits that you would recommend or techniques that they can try or, or just general life advice from, I mean, you've been playing for how long now? Um, I've been playing since I was 11, and I'm 32. I'm really bad at math. <laughs> that's all right. A long time. Yeah, <laughs> how, what is that? Because that, that's the funny thing. Like, uh, I should be really You're good at math up ge on, genetically. <laughs> that's what, eight, 18 years, I suppose? Yes. Yeah, something yeah. like so that. So trivium, trivium since 13, guitar since 11, and I'm 32 now. Um, but speaking of guitar here real quick, I do have two buddies that are incredible streamers, Yukog Monkey and Jason Paradise. Oh, those yeah, two Jason, dudes. Paradise. Jason Paradise those... used to work with us. He was oh, our no community kidding. manager, yeah. That's awesome. He was actually at one of our shows when I was 16 or 17 years old, one of our local shows, and we just uh, reconnected through Twitch, and he came out to our show in Charlotte. That's We've been great. buddies ever since. Um, but yeah, those guys are amazing. Those guys are freaking amazing guitar hero. But uh, so advice for guitar, yeah. Anything you've ever seen anyone do, you can pull off. You just have to put in more time than them. And I'll always have viewers be like, man, I wish I could do that on guitar. And I always tell them, you can do that, and you can get better than me if you put in more time. And that's that's really what it is. And with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, with guitar, with singing, with gaming, with everything, there is some natural talent in each of these things. But I didn't have those things. I didn't. I don't have natural talent in things. And I'm a very slow learner. So I recognize that we get the phrase from Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is everything is about mat time, time spent on the mat, time spent training. It's not watching other dudes do things or reading about methodology. It's actually committing yourself to do it. And that's why I started doing these streams this way. So Monday through Friday off tour. 9.30 to 11 and 3.30 to 6, people can see what it takes to keep your instrument at top form. And that's rigorous practice. No matter what level you're at, you have to keep it up. And um, things like practicing in a comfortable, efficient way. Like I practice on a drum throne. I use a DW drum throne tractor seat thing. It's one of the nicer drum thrones. So I sit on that classical guitar footstool. I make sure my back is always straight, sitting at the front of the drum throne. Um, my right leg is at 90 degrees. The left leg is what, uh, 45 to 50 to 60 degrees because the classical guitar stool. I make sure I never have anything bent this way or bent that way. It's always efficient and comfortable. Um, practicing with a metronome is one of the most important things you can ever do. I really like the Ultimate Guitar App metronome. That's just what I use because it's on my phone. It's nice and easy. Rock Discipline by John Petrucci is the DVD, or the VHS when I got as a kid. Definitely changed my life. Um, and from his stuff, it, it taught me how to make my own exercises. So daily, I just make my own scales and exercises that I play to a metronome and that I actually do my vocal exercises too to consolidate, maximize. I mean, maximize my time in the day because I used to do guitar separately and vocals separately. And now that I can do the two at the same time, it warms the two up together while keeping that singing guitar thing being exercised at the same time. Great. That's that's like that's a ton of really good advice in a very short <laughs> a amount of time. <laughs> that's wonderful. Thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, tell people where they can find you on Twitch or social media or wherever you want them to follow you. What's the name of your Twitch channel? We haven't Absolutely. mentioned it yet. <laughs> Absolutely. Twitch.tv slash Kichi Chaos Reigns. I know that's loud, long and loud. Uh, K-I-I-C-H-I-C-H-A-O-S-R-E-I-G-N-S. My gaming name is Kichi Chaos my middle name is Kichi. That's where that comes from. And Chaos Reigns is one of our heaviest songs. So Kichi, Chaos Reigns is the title. Um, if you look up Kichi, they'll find it. Uh, YouTube's Matthew Kichi Heavy slash Kichi Chaos. But I, I recommend everyone goes to my Twitch channel because that's, that's where everything is. And lately, we've just, within the last day and a half, we've implemented this bot where subscribers can like kind of shout out and vote what song they want. And the winner can come up pretty instantaneously. So we're doing like all requests today. And it's, it's fun because we have eight records out now and it keeps me on my toes having to relearn stuff and relearn stuff in front of people watching me while singing and playing guitar. So if I fuck <laughs> up vocal, sorry, if I screw up vocally or guitar wise, um, it's all that from there. But what's really funny is normally speaking of profanity, I don't normally use profanity in anything other than trivium shows and playing games. And like, I guess speaking of those two. <laughs> happens because i don't use it conversationally i don't really use profanity um but when i'm on stage it's a lot of f-bombs and when i'm playing games it's a lot of f-bombs so i guess that's where that comes the from. energy is a lot higher in both of those yes. things that's totally yes there's fun. almost almost none off stage and off games <laughs> that's wild <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. Cool. Thank you so much for the time, Matt. Have have fun. We'll tune in and watch you. And and good awesome. luck with Trivium. I know you you're like you've got stuff. Even as we're airing this uh, this interview, you're off doing interesting things with the band. I'm not going to ruin any surprises, but <laughs> that's uh, that's super great. Uh, and awesome. and nothing but continued success. And uh, and I hope a lot of our our players learn your licks. Heck yeah, I hope so. And um, anything you ever need from me, just let me know. I'm a text or an email away, and that's it. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Matt. So guys, take care. Thank you so much.